Okay, we're live. We're live, live. It's eight o'clock. Welcome to Traveling with Bruce Prime Time. How are you guys doing? Oh man, I'm having so much fun. I'm having so much fun. You can't believe it. Getting ready for this show. I was just, I was just looking at my channel. Yeah. Just you know, checking on on a couple of things, make sure I'm up to speed here. And a couple of comments came in, and it's great. I love you know I love comments. Yeah, I love responding to comments. Well, I got this guy who's uh, who's claiming that I'm lying about the MSCC side. I'm making it all up. I've got to be paid by Royal Caribbean or or Norwegian. I I I'm a plant. That's what it is. I'm just there's no way this guy is independent. He's 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 being paid by Royal Caribbean and and Norwegian to badmouth the MSCC side. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Please support me on Super Chat. <laughs> I'm dying here, folks. I'm not getting paid by YouTube. I'm not getting paid by Royal Caribbean. I'm not getting paid by Norwegian. What's a guy to do? <laughs> God, I just love that. I wrote this guy back. I said, are, are you being paid by the MSCC side? Are, are you working for MSC? Because you're bad mouthing me like I'm, I'm being paid by somebody else. Oh, my gosh. Unbelievable. Welcome to the 8 o'clock show. I just thought it would be a nice, easy show, and I'd be just talking about a few things. I was going to continue on about my uh, my trivia and my my uh, cruise ship history. I was telling you guys about on my five o'clock show. For those of you who just were watching the five o'clock show, I thought I'd go right on into that. And all of a sudden, this came up, so I thought, well, I better deal with that first. Oh my goodness, I love it! Unbelievable. This guy should join the chat. He should join the chat. That's what he should be doing. Oh boy, I'll tell you, such fun. Welcome back. Uh, this is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. I'm in British Columbia. I'm in Creston, BC, right beside the MSC Seaside. I'm just slamming that ship. It's right over here, right outside my front door. <laughs> I live in a cruise port uh, by the ocean here in Creston uh, where I can slam cruise ships for no good reason. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, that's what I do. Oh, my goodness. Um, I think we added two more subscribers since I went off the air. Um, I think we were at 14.14 uh, 14 now. Uh, we were 14.12, we're 14.14. Two new subscribers. I wonder if one of them is this guy. I don't know if it's that guy. I don't think so. But Oh, you never know. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah, so welcome back to the channel. Uh, thanks for joining me for Prime Time. If you've never been here before, uh, I'm Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. I love talking about cruise ships. I love cruise ships. I do. I love cruising. I love to go on cruises. I, I, I think there's nothing better than to get a really good deal on a really nice cruise ship. I, I, I live for that. I, I try to help my, my viewers find cruises like that. When we find them, we talk about deals like that. We've noticed deals on the MSCC side lately. The pictures of the ship are nice. The commercials on CNN are nice. But they don't have smell of vision do they? Um, the reports from passengers is not quite so nice. There's been nice, there's been happy passengers on the MSCC side. But there's been some very um, unhappy passengers on the MSCC side, and uh, they've made YouTube videos all by themselves. And uh, I'm just reporting what I'm hearing out there. And uh, oh yeah, a bunch of them are watching my broadcasts, uh, live streams, which I do six days a week, and they join in and tell us about what's going on. Yeah, like from Ireland, I have a guy, and from the USA, I've had several people. I'm not making this stuff up. I'm just passing it on. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what can I say? Let's see who's here. I'm just going to say hi to my gang here. My folks are, are, are signing in, telling me who's here, what's going on. And I just want to say hi to everybody. Uh, thank you for coming back to the 8 o'clock show. If you've never been here before, well, type in your name or, or tell me where you're watching from. What's your high temperature today? Uh, we were raining here today in Creston. I'm just three miles north of the U.S. border, just north of Idaho. Uh, and it's rainy here. It's kind of like Seattle. We're in the high 40s, you know, kind of wet. But what are you going to do? Um, Michelle Lucas is here. Uh, very spring in the mountains of California. Hey, how about that? Bob Hollis. Hi, Bruce. 55 and breezy in Atlanta. Bob's back. How you doing, everybody? Charles Jordan. And we're back. And we're back. That's right. And we're back. Debbie Manuel. Good evening, Bruce. And everyone, Randy Lucas, ready for round two today. Cam Wilson laughing out loud. Hey, Bruce. Leslie's Lovelies is here. Hi, Bruce. 43 in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Scott Batchley. Hi, Bruce. Made it back. Weather's clearing up a little 58 and fairly nice. Jim Thomas. Hi, Bruce. And all uh, Takashi. 
uh, Imazumi, Imiazumi, good morning. Good morning to you. You must be a newbie. You must be a first timer here. Uh, welcome to the channel. Um, are you in Japan by chance or South Korea or Taiwan or China or where are you watching us from? Welcome to the channel. Have, have you cruised before? Let me know. Charles Jordan, what did we miss, bro? Stammy Ray, hello again. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to it. Back for a second round tonight, says Peter Heckema. Bob Hollis with all the unrest at Mexican and Honduras ports. Uh, do you think cruise lines will start dis discounting Western Caribbean cruises? We want to go west this fall, but may consider. Uh, yeah, let me answer that in just a second. I was going to say hi to everybody else, and then we'll get back to that. That's a good question. Hey, the sun is out. The sun is out up here on the ridge in Paradise, California. Yay! Lady Luck is here. Hi, Bruce. Loves to travel is here. I love cruises. Bob Hollis, worst case scenario, book on seaside for Western Caribbean cruise and can't get off the smelly ship at ports. Debbie Manuel. Hi, Michelle and Randy up the hill. Uh, hi, Jim up north. Takashi. Uh, hi, Cloudy in Tokyo. In Tokyo. That's it. We have two watching out of Tokyo. Now. That's fantastic. Loves to travel. What what got you started on your Cruise Talk channel? Uh, alcohol. No, I'm just kidding. I'll, I'll get back to it. T Jim Thomas is, is laughing. Uh, Pamela Jordan. Hi, Bruce and everyone back again. Randy Lucas. Uh, hi, back at you. Debbie E. Leslie Lovelies. He's, he said Tokyo. Yeah. Um, Norman Duarte. Hello, 35 in Bridgeport today. So snow going away laughing out loud. Okay. Let's answer some questions here uh, kind of one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what what's what did we miss? Charles Jordan's going. What's going on? Well, I was I was just saying, um, it was like ten minutes ago, like ten minutes before airtime. I, I've been frantically working for the last hour to get my notes together for this show, and uh, I was just checking my channel just to make sure uh, you know uh, not missing anything. And uh, I noticed a little notification. I got a couple of comments. Oh, I love comments! So I I click on my comments uh, page, and I've got. Uh, I got two comments from this one guy. Um, I won't name them or anything like that. I mean, you can you can look up the comments. It's on the last video I did uh, two days ago. The one with the one about the seaside. That one. Uh, this guy is accusing me of being a uh, Royal Caribbean or Norwegian Cruise Line employee who pretends to just be a guy with a channel, and I'm slamming the seaside. That, that's that's my job. My job is to stick it to MSC. That's. That's what this guy's accusing me of. So don't believe him. He's lying. It's not true. It's all hearsay. He's making this crap up. <laughs> yeah, I'm making everything up about the seaside. It's all me. Oh, it's all my imagination. Running amok, running wild. I'm just, I have 1,414 subscribers who are believing this schlock. They think that I, they believe that I'm making it all up. Yeah, right. <laughs> I wrote back. I said, hey, are you being paid by MSC Z-Side? Are you being paid by MSC? Because I'm not being paid. Where's my check? <laughs> if I was being paid by Royal Caribbean, why am I begging for super chats? <laughs> it's part of the ruse. It's part of the plan. It's the whole thing. You pretend you're a poor guy in Creston, British Columbia in Canada. And you say you're three miles north of the U.S. border, and you you put a YouTube channel together in August of 2017, well before the MSC Seaside will ever touch the water. And then what you do is you create all these videos, you know, about your travels and all this sort of stuff, and you go through all the work to get all the videos up. And you learn how to do all this stuff, and then you do all the social media marketing of your channel, and you learn all that. And then you start live streaming in early January, knowing that at any time the MSC Seaside is going to be in Miami and you're going to just slam the bejesus out of that ship. And sure enough, in your third, fourth week of being on the air, the time has come. You can really slam the MSC Seaside because you can make up stories about the MSC Seaside. You can make up stories like uh, the plumbing is bursting on the ship or uh, uh, showers are backing up with poo uh, or... Um, Oh, uh, there are announcements in six languages every two minutes, or uh, the food is lousy in the buffet, or they play opera all the time for entertainment, or the restaurant staff isn't very attentive on in some occasions. A lot of passengers have complained about that. Apparently, I'm making that up. Though. I'm just making it up. It's not real. It's fake news. It's fake news. I must be CNN. That's must. I must be CNN. Ah. What a plan! I'm I'm a genius. I'm just a genius. The only thing is that um, I don't have a check from uh, Royal Caribbean. I don't get. I'm not getting paid by anybody to do all this stuff. So 
there's something wrong with the plan. I got to go back to the drawing board. I got to work on the plan, figure it out. I'm, I'm telling you, oh, it used to be so easy. It's not that easy anymore. I'm telling you guys. Okay, next question. Bob Hollis, with all the unrest in the Mexican and Honduran ports, do you think cruise lines will start discounting Western Caribbean cruises? This is a darn good question. Bob, are you real or are you plant? Did I plant you out there? Did I pay you under the table to ask me these questions? So it looks like I'm not talking about the MSCC side all the time. It looks like I've got a legitimate channel that's talking about cruising. But really, I'm going to talk about this for a while. And then I'm going to go right back to the MSCC side. That, that's We're in on it, aren't we, Bob? We're in on it. <sighs> yeah. I get so excited. <laughs> uh, the answer, Bob, is probably not. Um, and I'll tell you why they probably won't discount Western Caribbean cruises. Uh, they're just going to go somewhere else. The ships will be rerouted, and they'll just say, "Sorry, folks, uh, we can't go to uh, can't go to Honduras to to, uh, to unstable, right? You know, to unstable. Can't go to uh, can't go to uh, Cozumel right now. Um, we're going to go to Belize, or we're going to go to Panama. Or we're going to go to because the ship, you know, at what, 30 miles an hour, um, 18 hours, and go 500 miles, you know, in a circle <laughs> anywhere it wants to go, they'll just find another port to go to. They'll just reroute the ships to other ports. They'll apologize to their passengers, might give them a 10% onboard credit, might not. Um, and they'll just say, for your safety, we just won't go to these places where, you know, we feel that you might be injured or you might be uh, inconvenienced or, you know, where we can't, can, where we cannot guarantee your safety. We won't take you there. And if it's a last minute change, that's what we're all about. We can do that as a cruise line. So, uh, so Bob, I doubt that they would do that. Um, they'll just, they'll just shift the itineraries. A few years ago, you know, in Mexico, they stopped going to, uh, Mazatlan. Uh, they stopped Mazatlan completely because of the gang wars. Uh, about four years, it, you know, didn't happen. And then they came back. The Mazatlan is back again because the Mexican authorities, they dealt with it, uh, but it took them a while. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that that's the answer. Um, if, if there were like, you know, if, if every cruise line had, um, three ships a week going into these ports, like really heavily, uh, and they had like more than one or two to deal with, maybe then there might be discounting, but again, there's, st they still wouldn't go to those ports. I mean, you know, they're just not going to go there. Uh, so they'll, they'll go elsewhere. I just, I just sense that what, what's coming um, it's what we talked about, what, yesterday, the day before, where we're talking about these private islands in the Caribbean, these private resorts. We're going to see more of that. We're going to see more of that now in Central America. You're going to see this in maybe Mexican Mexican territory, maybe not. Um, you're just going to find that these cruise lines are systematically going to acquire uh, private resort facilities to take you to rather than expose you to the dangers of a violent third world. And it's too bad because, you know, if someone's taking a cruise from, say, Hawaii, uh, from Miami, <laughs> Hawaii, from Miami, uh, that was going to go to Honduras and they had relatives there, you know, it would have been a nice six hour visit, you know. Uh, Auntie so and so is coming in from America on the cruise ship and she's going to be with us for six hours. We'll have a dinner with the whole family. It's going to be great. But out of what, 4,000 passengers, maybe 10, 20, 50, 100, 200 have friends in Honduras, you know what I mean? The rest don't. They're just, they're travelers like the rest of us who are just looking for a good time, you know, a safe, good time. So I see this happening uh, with cruise lines. They'll, they'll just divert away from trouble spots, go to other spots, and or eventually they'll have their own Honduran resort area um totally cut off from the population and they'll control everything i can i can see that happening okay the next question that was asked <clears throat> was from loves to travel what got you started on your cruise talk channel what got me all riled up to do this <laughs> well i i've said it before and i'll say it again because uh every month uh you know i'm talking to five six hundred new people that i've never talked to before but um I'm, I love YouTubing. I'm a YouTube guy myself, or have been. And for 10 years, I've been on YouTube, just watching YouTube videos. Love it. And uh, I've been on cruises, and I've traveled, and, uh, you know, 
been in the investment business. I've lived in the Cayman Islands. I lived in uh, Palm Desert, California. I'm now here in Canada again. So I kind of been around a bit, um, but uh, I, I, it started to kind of trigger in my mind about a year, uh, a year August, so August 2016, somewhere in the summer of 16. I started thinking about, you know, I could, I could do that. <laughs> I could, I could do, I could do YouTube. Yeah, I could do it, but um, I, I didn't know uh, what I would do on YouTube. Uh, I was thinking about that going, if I was to do a YouTube channel, what would it be about? Would I talk about the stock market? I could talk about the stock market for hours. I could talk about investments. I could talk about uh, uh, living as an expatriate in, in uh, you know, in the Cayman Islands. I could talk about that. I could talk about, you know, my life's experiences, uh, the jobs I've had, and on and on and on. I, you know, I, I love cars. I could do videos about cars, but I'm not a car guy. Like I don't get my hands dirty. I just drive them. I don't touch them. Ah, uh, but it just it just didn't it didn't get to me. It was it wasn't something there. But the traveling thing, the traveling thing. I love talking about traveling, and I and I'm telling. I'll meet friends like at a. My wife and I'll be invited over to a friend's house for a coffee or something, and there'll be another couple of couples there, and people I meet or I've met before, haven't met before. And, uh, you know, a topic comes up about this and that. And one person will say, well, we heard that you were on a cruise uh, uh, last year. Where did you go? And then, you know, I'll just start talking about the cruise I was on. And it's like all these faces are going, yeah, 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 yeah. Balcony cruise, yeah. Where'd you go? Oh, wow. That's, oh, that sounds really great. Oh, wow. They're just, they're just, they're just, they just want more. Well, how did, how did you find that cruise? Well, I found it on vacationsgo.com. Well, what's that? Well, it's a website that I, and they're just like, wow, oh, that's, re that's really interesting. Wow, that's, boy, do you ever know a lot about cruising? And I'm just going, what, what are you talking about? I just love going on cruises. I love to book my own travels. I like to find my own hotels. I like to, and then I thought, ah, see, I like. I really like talking about the intricacies of the whole thing and putting it all together and the behind the scenes stuff. And I follow the cruise industry a little bit. And, I, and then I thought, oh, okay, well, you know, you like talking about that, and people love hearing you talk about that, even you know, in person or whatever. So I thought, well, okay, if I'm going to do a YouTube channel, maybe I'll do something about traveling. And I thought, well, why don't you just call the channel "Traveling with Bruce." Because that way you're not locking yourself in. If you say cruising with Bruce or cruise ship vacationing with Bruce or, you know, you're locking yourself in. And if I say, you know, Royal Caribbean tips, then I'm tipping my hand to that guy who thinks I work for Royal Caribbean where, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not. I'm really not. So traveling with Bruce was the idea. So that's how that came together. And I launched it in August, finally, after watching months and months of videos on YouTube on how to do YouTube, how to be a YouTuber. And I was studying all these other channels that I like to watch and how they do it and learning, you know, what, what is involved. And uh, still, when I started my YouTube channel, I knew 10% of what I know now. <laughs> I'm still learning. It's unbelievable. I'm up at 3, 4 in the morning. I'm wide awake at 4 in the morning. I'm having that coffee. I'm on YouTube. I'm watching more how to do this, how to do that, how to promote your YouTube channel on Instagram, how to promote your channel on Twitter, how to uh, enhance your viewership by doing it. And it, I never, it never ends. It never ends. I love it. It's exciting. It's a lot of work, though. And uh, it would be nice if I were monetized by YouTube, but I'm not right now, although I was a month ago, uh, but I'm not now. So uh, there's a brief reason how and everything I did, but I don't want to hold everybody up too much with that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I'm looking at the comments. While I'm going on, people are talking behind me here. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Norman Duarte, thumbs up. Charles Jordan, laughing out loud. Bob Hollis, you've got a secret. Well, the real Bruce Robert, please stand up. Uh, yes, uh, Lisa Blakemore. Good evening, everyone. It was sunny in the high 40s in New Jersey. Ignore the haters, Bruce. They're just jealous. They just want to be you. If they can't be you, they want to be near you. I know it. Jim Thomas, for a for a time, uh, for a timekeeper, you are very fun, very informative, and I'm glad I decided to listen to Deb and Watch. <laughs> Bob Hollis, I'm real. Bob, uh, Bob, say it. I'm real. I'm not, I'm not a plant. I'm not a shill. I'm a real guy. <laughs> Scott Batchley, too funny, Bruce. No fake news, please. Leslie Lovelace, Bruce is an equal opportunity reviewer. He calls them 
how he sees them. There you go. Thank you, Randy Lucas. All this talk about the MSCC side stinks. Laughing out loud. It just stinks. Lady Luck laughing out loud at Randy. Randy Lucas, that's all of us. Just looking for a good time. Ha ha. Sylvan Forrest, I'm back for take two. Thumbs up, please, everybody. Norman Duarte, good time right here. Fun stuff. Talking about fun and not fun on the show. Laughing out loud. Bruce O is here. Bruce O, welcome back, buddy. Bruce, I'm still in Naples, Florida. Only about 70 today. Just a heads up. Rumor on the street down here on Marco Island is you're on the take from MSC. Just saying, it's there's a rumor about you, Bruce. You're on the take. <laughs> Peter Heckema, have you ever thought about being a customer service guy on the MSC side? Oh, I would be the guy. Yeah, I'd be the guy. I'd be handing out so many vouchers, they'd go broke. <laughs> They'd fire my butt out of there. Bruce, we can't have you anymore as a customer service rep. You're just too nice to everybody. You, you just, you're just agreeing with the customers about how shitty the ship, the ship is. You can't do that. No, Bruce, we can't. <laughs> Randy Lucas, a big part of the fun for me is the planning of the trip from choosing the cruise and the excursions to booking the airfare and the hotels pre and post cruise. I'll add in the car rental if you do that. And what are you going to do at the port city? And, you know, yeah, I, I love it. Uh, the the One of the greatest vacations I had, and I'll try to make this as short as possible, was my wife and I had to visit our daughter in Berlin. She was living in Berlin, Germany. And uh, I had been to Berlin with my daughter in 2008 uh, prior to our daddy-daughter cruise, which we did in the Mediterranean on the Norwegian Jade. But in uh, 2015, Christmas, my daughter was living in Berlin, and my wife said to me, we're going to Berlin for Christmas. And I thought, yeah, that's a great idea. It's our only child. We'll go see her and, and her boyfriend. So um, I said to my wife, well, I'll, I'll put a little holiday together for us. She says, well, you just you just do whatever you have to do. You know, just don't bother me. I'll watch, I'll watch my, you know, I'll watch my shows on TV. You know, uh, she has her favorite television shows she likes, she likes to watch. And, and she said, you, you, you put it together. Just let me know. You know just let me know. Oh, okay, okay. I'll I'll put a I'll put a trip together. So we flew from Calgary to London, England, from London to Berlin. That was one day. Then we spent the Christmas with my daughter and her boyfriend in Berlin. Loved it. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, then on the thirtieth of uh, December, the thirtieth, uh, we got on a train, high speed German ice train, um, from uh, from Berlin to Paris. And so we ended up in Paris on the evening of the 30th. We stayed in a five-star hotel that the week before was 500 bucks a night. We're paying 140 bucks a night, American, for this five-star hotel for three nights. It's in the financial district, which is abandoned because they're all on holiday for the, for the New Year's. We spent New Year's Eve in Paris. And uh, like I say, two, three days Paris. Then we took the Channel train from Paris to London under the channel. That was a bucket list item for my for me. Then we uh, we went to Heathrow Airport, spent a night in a hotel there, and then the next morning got on a plane, flew to Miami, got off the ship, one night in a hotel in Miami, next day on a cruise ship, a Norwegian epic, did a one-week cruise in the Caribbean, loved it, got off the ship up to Fort Lauderdale, took a direct flight on JetBlue all the way to Las Vegas, Don King was on the plane. You guys, you know the guy with the hair? You know that guy? Front seat. Everybody was shaking his hand as they were going in. Oh, hi, Mr. King. That's nice to meet you. Uh, lovely, lovely guy. Lovely guy. And then we landed in Vegas, had a night, one night uh, in Las Vegas at the Monte Carlo. And then the next evening, 24 hours later, we flew back to Calgary. Now, that's a holiday. That's, that's a getaway. That's a cruise. Then a train ride. And another train ride, and a plane right here, and a plane right. Loved it. Wonderful memories, and that's what I put together myself. Thank you very much. And had a, we had a wonderful time. What a wonderful time! So there you go. Um, love planning my stuff. Charlie Bond. Hi Bruce. I heard the new Carnival ship needs to be repainted. Yes, uh, uh, Charlie. It's um, silicone. Silicone chips have been coming off the paint job of the brand new ship, the Horizon. I was mentioning this about two, three days ago, and uh, the water in the dry dock, like they, they they paint the hull, and then they wait for the paint to dry. Then they fill the thing up with water, float the ship. And at that point, the cruise, the, the shipbuilder, 
was saying to Carnival, here you go. You want the keys? It's ready to go. Carnival said, we're not taking delivery of the ship right now. It's not done. And they said, what do you mean it's not done? Look at the water inside your uh, inside your dry dock here. All the silicon is peeling off the hull inside the dry dock. They're not even moving. The ship is just sitting there. Can you imagine if it's moving at 20 miles an hour? It will just rip off this stuff. Well, they went down there and took a look at it. They drained the water after they... Of course, they have to skim off all the you know pollutants because uh, pollution controls are serious in the United Kingdom. I mean, in the uh, economic European Union, um, and uh, and they're working on it. They're, 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 I think they have to repaint it. So yeah, uh, Charlie, that's what's going on. Scott Batcha, yes, wonder what is up with that, Charlie. Randy Lucas or Michelle thinks maybe Bruce's wife cha <laughs> changed out of the caffeine-free diet coke for the real uh, deal at supper. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's right. Here. It's right here. Is my I just brand new one. I just opened it. It's quite full. Excuse me. <laughs> I will admit, though, I I did have a piece of chocolate cake. <laughs> I'm all sugared up. <laughs> oh my goodness, Jorman saying that's funny. Randy L loves to travel. I want you to plan my trips. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll try and show you how. I'll try and tell you how. But you really got to do it yourself. But I hear you. Uh, for, for my wife, she would never do that. I mean, never. Oh, no. Uh, the trip to Berlin, I mean, it, had she been booking all this, it would have been a flight to Berlin. It would have been a flight back to Canada. That's it. You know, spending time with the daughter. Great time. I've been <laughs> just going out of chance. It was cold in Berlin. It wasn't like it was 40 below zero or anything like that. But in Berlin in, in December, January, it's like, uh, what would that be? About 20 degrees, 25 degrees, 15 degrees, 20 degrees. But it's humid because Berlin is very low. Uh, uh, so maybe 300 feet above sea level. It's not very high. So the air is heavier. The humidity is deadly, biting, uh, a biting cold. If there's any kind of a breeze, it just kills you. And, uh, and I, I said to my wife, we were, we were in the UK in December back in, uh, oh, gosh, 90 no, oh my goodness 1999 something like that and uh it was uh it was not pleasant it was a cold clammy feeling wet and i said we're gonna want a change to that and uh i got i've got the solution it's a caribbean cruise there's a way to get rid of that cold yucky weather out of our system our daughter can stay in berlin with her boyfriend because you know he's keeping her warm they're all fine young kids but uh, for us old oldsters I got the answer. Yeah, a Caribbean cruise will take care of this. And the spa on the Epic was just the ticket for this guy. It was perfect. So it worked out. <laughs> Silo, late here, but Bruce. Uh, hello, Bruce. Hey, all. Uh, Sylvan Forest, we see the soda can. But what have you got in there? Ah, what have you got? Exactly, Sylvan White. What do you, what's in that can? The steaming bean. Berlin is fab in April. Asparagus season. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, steaming bean. Lady Luck, all these comments tonight. Woohoo! <laughs> now, where where we left off on the five o'clock show? Uh, for those of you who were not here, uh, what I did on the five o'clock show was I talked about a little bit of the history of the cruise business, um, kind of from like 1958, 59, 1960 up until 1979. I went right up until just about the 1980s. And I was talking about how a lot of these cruise lines sort of showed up, how they became their infancy, their infancy uh, how they started up, and how uh, cruise ships uh, were born out of the demise of uh, ocean liners that were killed off by the jet airplane, the Boeing 707 in 1958 with Pan Am. How Pan Am took delivery in the, of the first 707 in 1958 by 1959. Uh, there were so many 707s going across the ocean that more people were traveling across the Atlantic by plane than by ship than by ocean liner. And the ocean liner had dominated for decades, decades and decades and decades. Um, but then things changed, of course, because of the, the jet. The airlines found that they could run a jet plane like a 707 at such a low cost on a per seat mile basis. They had an economy section in the back of the plane. I mean, 150 seats, they had 100 economy seats and 50 of the nicer seats up front. And eventually, of course, they ended up with you know, high-end first class and, uh, uh, and then the steerage in the back. And nowadays, of course, we have first class, business class, premium economy, economy, 
you name it. Anyway, when the 747 came out in 69, that absolutely finished whoever was left. If there was any cruise line thinking of surviving, you're done now because the 747 is so cheap to run on a per mile basis that no cruise ship could compete because they got to feed you for five days. <laughs> a cruise, an airline, they got to feed you for five hours. <laughs> <laughs> one meal and a snack and you're done get out of here <laughs> anyway so that's where we left it so now i've got a 1980 to to kind of the last few years some more history for you guys about how the cruise business has become the cruise business we know because history shows us where we've been and how the heck did we get here and uh i'll start off by saying that uh in 1980 um Norwegian Cruise Line or Norwegian Caribbean Lines at that time, they bought the uh, the uh, France, the the ocean liner, the France, and they refurbished it and renamed it the the Norway, and it was uh, at seventy six thousand tons, the largest and longest passenger ship at sea at that time. This is nineteen eighty, and uh, nineteen eighty one during the Gulf War. You remember the first Gulf War uh, with. President Bush, the father, oil goes up to 35 bucks a barrel, from 10, 12 bucks a barrel to $35 a barrel. And Carnival uh, in 1982 has its first ever ship built, custom built for the company called the Tropical. So it took until 1982 for Carnival to start building, getting their own ships custom made for them. Prior to that, they'd been buying used ships and refurbishing them for themselves. Now they're getting their own ships made. 1982, the British government charters the QE2 and the Canberra, two large ocean liners, as troop ships for the Falklands War with Argentina. Do you remember that? Those two ships were completely painted in combat colors, and uh, they had anti-aircraft guns installed wherever they could, and they were moving troops and supplies from the UK to the Falklands. Uh, 1984, network television ads were used by Carnival for the very first time to promote the, uh, the uh, cruise line. And who was the spokesperson for Carnival Cruise Lines? This is your first trivia question. Who was the spokesperson for Carnival Cruise Lines in 1984 and after on their television ads to promote cruising to uh, U.S. Uh, families, uh, people, uh, husbands, wives, kids, name it. Who was it? I'll see if anyone gets that. Quite curious if any of you can get that uh, get that answer for me. Uh, Steaming Bean has got an answer. He's got a partial answer, but uh, yeah, we'll see if anyone else has got one. Uh, here we go. Yeah, you got it. Kathy Lee. Kathy Lee Johnson was her name at the time, but she ended up becoming Mrs. Kathy Lee Gifford. And uh, she uh, was the spokesperson for Carnival. I bet you that made her nationally, really nationally known. Uh, she was somewhat known, but I think this put her over the top and got her nationally known. Uh, Sylvan Force is saying, I have fond memories of France and Norway. Can't take that away from me. Fantastic. Uh, great comment. Um, next uh, port here, next point of, of, uh, of order, 1985. Premier Cruise Lines premiered with the Disney Company on the big red boat premier cruise line started to uh, to make a deal with the disney company to do the characters on their cruise line and their ships were known as the big red boat 1985. um let's see here what we got for your comments comments so scott batchy i do believe i remember the azure seas out of long beach one hot tub wasn't that Norwegian Cruise Line, Azure Seas, I don't know. Uh, Kathy Lee Gifford, Sylvana saying, uh, Steaming Bean, what do I get? You get to watch me do the show in a Chicago Bear shirt, and I'm not taking it off. <laughs> I'm still teasing you about that, aren't I? <laughs> okay, uh, 1986, direct dial satellite calls started on cruise ships. 1986, you could make a direct call. Uh, cost you a fortune. Um, 1986, Royal Caribbean leases Labadee in Haiti, the, the Labadee area in 1986, 32 years ago. Royal Caribbean got the land. 1986, Norwegian Cruise Line buys, buys Royal Viking Line. 
They buy the Royal Viking Line. 1987, a Norwegian Caribbean Line becomes Norwegian Cruise Line. They've changed their name to Norwegian Cruise Line. In 1987, Carnival Cruise Lines goes public with a stock offering. The first cruise line to go public, a major cruise line, to go public and sell its shares on the open market. And they did that to raise cash to build more ships, of course. Um, <laughs> a cool shirt. Seeming being cool shirt. <laughs> they, they are bear cruises. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, 1987, the QE2 uh, converts from steam, uh, uh, steam engine, steam power. They were using bunker fuel to diesel electric. So they have diesel engines creating electricity, powering their engines. So the QE2 in 87 went through a major, major refit. And uh, I think it took a year uh, for the uh, QE2 to be redone. And then they added, they added cabins and they modernized it. And that was uh, about 18 years after it was launched. In 1988, Royal Caribbean launches the world's largest cruise ship called Sovereign of the Seas. Uh, 1988, Norwegian builds the Seaward offers the first surcharge dining option. Ah, also had it on the Norway, uh, but in 1912, the Ritz-Carlton Hotel originally offered premium dining services in 1912 on the Titanic. How about that? So dining, surcharge dining, so specialty dining, isn't all that new. It started in 1912 on the Titanic, then it was done by the Norwegian Cruise Line uh, on the Norway that they had converted from the France. Uh, and then they added it to the Seaward and, of course, all other cruise lines. 1989, Carnival buys Holland America. 1989. So Carnival has owned Holland America now for 29 years. 1989, Celebrity Cruises is founded, created. 1989, another new cruise line. 1990, Norwegian Cruise Line Norway, $40 million renovation and expansion. They added two decks to the top of the ship. Uh, that equaled 100 more cabins with suites that had verandas. And for a period of time, that ship again became the largest ship at sea for the cruise business. It had been usurped a, a little while earlier. That was 1990. In 1990, Carnival Fantasy enters the market. It's the first of eight fantasy class ships that Carnival is building. Now that they're a public company, they got the cash to start building their own ships and they start building the fantasy class, eight of them. 1990, Celebrity Sales, its first cruise, the rebuilt SS Meridian ship it was built in 1963 originally. A new ship called Horizon entered service from Celebrity, and then a twin sister ship was called the Zenith, was ordered for delivery in 1992. So Celebrity got going quite quickly as well. 1990, MSC Cruises was founded by the Meridian, the Mediterranean Shipping Company, which is MSC. The Mediterranean Shipping Company is the world's second largest container cruise company in the world, and they own MSC. And of course, I, I take delight in slamming MSC, because that's all I live for. Because I get paid under the table by, you know, Royal Caribbean and Norwegian. I mean, they all pay me tons of cash uh, to do this out of Creston, British Columbia, you know, so that you would never know that a plant like me is in this little village in Canada doing all this damage to MSC. That, that's just, just, just my style, you know. <laughs> Other information for you guys. Um, 1990, Crystal Cruises started up with Crystal Harmony. The ship caught fire on its maiden voyage, and it was adrift in the sea for three days. Caught fire on its maiden voyage. ship was adrift for three days. 1991, Royal Caribbean launches Monarch of the Seas. Had 2,744 passenger capacity, most of any ship at sea. How about that? 1991. 1992, Princess Cruises launches a new destination in the Bahamas, called Princess K's. Still got it today. Princess K's. That was in 1992. 1993, Royal Caribbean goes public with a stock offering on the New York Stock Exchange. So right after Carnival went public, boom, 
Royal Caribbean went public, and guess what's coming? We know it. 1993, in October, Disney ends the partnership they had with the Premier Cruise Line, those big red boats. The last cruise with a Disney character on it was March 1994 with the Premier Cruise Line Company. 1994, Norwegian Cruise Line sends first ship to Alaska. For the first time, they're going to Alaska. 1995, Princess Cruises launches Princess Sun, the largest ship cruise ship in the world. Princess Sun. 1996, Carnival Destiny enters service as the largest cruise ship ever. 2,642 passengers. So we're up to 2,600 passengers in 1996. 1996, Royal Caribbean orders two cruise ships, each at 130,000 tons, world record, to be the largest ships ever put to sea for cruising. 1996, Royal Caribbean, uh, sorry, Royal Cruise Lines merged with Norwegian, and Norwegian now was called Norwegian Cruise Line Limited. 1997, Hall America buys an island in the Bahamas, calls it Half Moon K. What a lovely name that is. Familiar sounding name, 21 years ago, 1997. 1997, Disney gets set to launch the Disney Magic. They decide that because of all the interest, they decide to hold a lottery for the first spots on the ship. So the entire ship was filled by people who had their name drawn out of a drum or however they did it. That's how popular Disney was before they even started their own branded ship line in 1997. 1997, Norwegian Cruise Line creates the first cruise line website. The first cruise line website, 21 years ago in 1997. When did you get your first computer? Do you remember when you got your first computer? I remember mine. It's a desktop, 1993. That's when I got my first desktop, 1993. Uh, 1997, Carnival buys 50% of Costa cruises out of the Mediterranean. And in 1997, Royal Caribbean buys Celebrity Cruise Lines. So Celebrity now is a part of Royal Caribbean, the newly created public company on the New York Stock Exchange. And here we go with the, with the war, the, the, the race to become the largest cruise company in the world. 1998, Royal Caribbean will install, uh, they announced that they will install new Azapods on the Voyager class of ships that they're building, these 130,000 ton ships. No need for rudders or stern thrusters. The ships can turn in a 360-degree pattern on a dime by themselves. No tugboats. In and out of port fast, quick. More, more time at sea to get to the next destination, which means you can go further between stops. More money. More money. 1998, Grand Prince has entered service as the largest ship and first ship with an onboard wedding chapel. How about that? Get married at sea. 1998, Carnival Paradise becomes the first ever non-smoking cruise ship. 1998. Also 1998, Carnival buys Cunard. Home of the QE2. They bought Cunard Cruise Lines. 1998, Norwegian buys Oriental Lines. And they stretch two ships. Stretch them out. They renamed them the Norwegian Dream and the Norwegian Wind. Two new ships. 1998, July, Disney launches the Disney Magic. And in 1999, August, Disney Wonder enters service, the second ship. Now Disney has two in 1999. 1999, Norwegian Cruise Line Sky becomes the first ship with an internet cafe. First ship at sea in 1999 with an internet cafe. Freestyle cruising is available uh, on the maiden voyage. It runs aground in the St. Lawrence Seaway. <laughs> so I say don't go on maiden cruises. So that, that was a, an auspicious start for the Norwegian sky. So the folks can go to the, the, the internet cafe and tell their relatives back home, we've just run aground in the St. Lawrence. Uh, they repaired it and got it back up and running not too long after that. 1999, Royal Caribbean Voyager of the Seas is the largest cruise ship with rock climbing wall, ice skating rink, and a golf simulator. And those Azapod thrusters. 1999, the SS United States is placed on the National Registrar of Historic Places in Philadelphia. It's, a, it's still there to this very day. 1999, the Norwegian, Norwegian Cruise Line Norway 
has a fire in the engine room in Barcelona. It's out of service for a few weeks to be repaired. And also 1999 Carnival takes um, uh, full control of Seaborn and Cunard. Complete takeover is completed. 1999 Carnival Triumph is launched with 3,413 passengers. That's a new record for the most passengers on a single cruise ship. 2000 Premier Cruise Lines is bankrupt. Left uh, about six ships, uh, at whatever wherever they were, they were locked up. Passengers were disembarked, abandoned, had to find their way home. That was in the year 2000. 2000, Genting Hong Kong buys Norwegian Cruise Lines to become the third largest cruise line in the world. That was in 2000. And they commit to putting in hundreds of millions of dollars of cash into the company to refresh the ship, order new ships, and bring it up to the standards of Carnival and Royal Caribbean. They have public money to grow. Now Norwegian Cruise Line has genting Hong Kong money to grow. 2000, Carnival owns 100% of Costa. They bought the other half. And in 2000, Celebrity Cruises launches the Millennium, the first ship with a gas turbine engines, cleaner burning than other cruise lines. 2001, after September 11th, the Renaissance Cruise Line, American Classic Voyages, Commodore Cruise Lines all go bankrupt. Within months, they're all bankrupt. 2002, Hall America creates Pinnacle Grill for a $20 fee. It's a specialty restaurant, folks. It's just a specialty restaurant. And all you have to do is pay 20 bucks, and you can go into the specialty restaurant for $20 extra. And you get this beautiful six-star dining experience over and above the wonderful dining experience we have in the, in the dining room. And this is just, it's just going to be a wonderful feature. And I'm sure that's as far as it's going to go. I mean, I can't imagine any other cruise line going any further than that. Just one specialty restaurant for $20. There you go. Cruising is still an affordable, happy experience for everyone to enjoy. Moving on, uh, 2002, Norwegian Cruise Line offers wireless internet. <laughs> 2002 Carnival launches three new ships, the Conquest, the Legend, and the Pride. Carnival's got cash, and they are putting it right back into the ships and coming up with new ship after new ship after new ship, one after the other. 2003 Royal Caribbean adds rock climbing walls to all ships. <laughs> 2003 Oceana Cruises is formed. 2003 P&O merges with Carnival. Now, Carnival is the world's single largest cruise line all by itself. 2003, Norwegian Cruise Line uh, operates um, uh, Norwegian Cruise Line America. Uh, NCL buys the SS United States. And in 2003, Norwegian Cruise Line, the Norway, has a boiler explosion on board, killing eight crew members. The ship is unrepairable. It is retired forever. 2003, Celebrity introduces acupuncture at sea for the first time. 2004, Norwegian Cruise Line dry docks the sky and renames it Pride of America for Hawaii, Hawaii cruising with an all-American crew. And in 2006, fire on board the Star Princess, 150 cabins are destroyed, one person is, is killed, a uh, heart attack apparently, a cigarette was to blame. Someone was smoking a cigarette on the, on the, uh, on the ship when they weren't supposed to be. 2006, Norwegian Cruise Line has the first bowling alley at sea, 2006. 2006, Royal Caribbean, Freedom of the Seas, enters service with flow riders, and it's the biggest ship in the world, rock climbing walls and everything else. 2006, the Costa Concordia is launched, boasting the largest spa at sea, and a flamboyant Italian captain. 2006, the state of Alaska imposes a $50 a person head tax on all passengers coming off of cruise ships to Alaska. Cruise lines immediately cancel all cruises to Alaska. <laughs> that didn't last long. 2007, Apollo Management buys Oceana and Region 7 Seas plus a 50% interest in Norwegian cruise lines from Genting, Hong Kong was a, over a billion dollars to buy the, the deal, to, to make that deal happen. And it was Apollo management that then was able to raise billions more for Norwegian 
to allow it to expand and build the big ships we know now and to take Norwegian public. 2070, 2007, Celebrity creates the Azamara brand, a six-star cruise line to its, to its existence. And in 2007, the QE2 is officially sold to a group of investors in Dubai for $100 million. Plans called for the ship to be turned into a floating hotel. 2007, a fuel surcharge was imposed by all cruise lines because oil hit 140 bucks a barrel for a short period of time, but was over 100 a barrel for quite a long period of time. 2008, Norwegian Cruise Line pulls two ships out of Hawaii, leaves only the pride of America with one American, all-American crew. The other two ships are pulled out. One is the Norwegian Jade, um, and uh, they, uh, they abandon the idea of having three ships just doing Hawaii all the time. They abandon that plan. They're down to one, still there today. In 2008, fuel surcharge ends for cruise lines. 2009, Carnival launches the Dream as its largest ship. And in 2009, Royal Caribbean launches the Oasis of the Seas, debuts as the world's largest ever cruise ship with a capacity of 5,412 passengers. And that's my trivia for today. And that takes us to 2009. And so I still have nine years to catch up on. Just amazing how these, uh, how these lines um, uh, you know, evolved and were uh, crafted and, and put together. Some of these lines, of course, were put together for economic necessity. Uh, they either merge or die separately, merge and survive or not. Some cruise lines were bought by others who were much stronger and they were much weaker. So that's how it goes. But as each ship comes out, each one is the world's biggest, the world's biggest, the world's biggest. And here we go. Uh, what, in a week? Symphony of the Seas will usurp Harmony of the Seas, and it'll be the largest cruise ship in the world by passenger count. And I think it's 2,000 tons heavier than the, than the Harmony. But, of course, uh, I know all that because I'm, you know, I'm employed by Royal Caribbean as a, you know, as a critic of MSC. I mean, I know everything about Royal Caribbean. I'm sure, you know. Uh, <laughs> anyway, very interesting stuff. Um, <laughs> loves to travel. I can't even remember what I did yesterday. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, let's see here. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going back to my comments. I missed a few of your little comments here. <laughs> steaming bean. A few years ago, I would not have considered carnival, but now I'm intrigued. The steaming bean. Bruce is getting hyper. <laughs> <laughs> loves to travel, is laughing out loud. Tammy Ray, I love Carnival personally. Steaming Bean, I would love to, uh, like to uh, go on the magic. Steaming Bean saying, love to go on the magic. Loves to travel, can't even remember what I did yesterday. Steaming Bean, Carnival Magic, Disney Magic. Randy Lucas, I should have bought stock in Carnival the day after the Costa Concordia. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, changes, changes, changes. The three big ones, of course, Carnival, Royal Caribbean, the Norwegian, they're all public now. They're all publicly traded on the, uh, I think, New York Exchange. They have capital to keep growing. Uh, they're able to borrow money between 4 and 5% interest uh, on long-term bonds. Uh, they uh, are constantly uh, bringing out record profits. Um, they're um, they're uh, increasing their passenger loads right now. Uh, they're having a great year for 2018. Uh, they're predicting all of 2018 to be a record year. Uh, 2017 was a record year. 2016 was another good year. Uh, the uh, capacity keeps growing on, on the entire fleet of cruise ships that are out there worldwide. Um, 27 ships delivered will be delivered this year uh, as you know, 20 or plus more next year. It's uh, unbelievable. Cruise, cruise yard, the shipyards, uh, they can't build a new ship for you for five years. You got the money, doesn't matter. We haven't got, we, we got so many orders ahead of you that we can't get to your ship for a couple of more years. That's why uh, Virgin uh, wants to do a ship. The Ritz-Carlton is doing a couple of ships, but they're three, four years down the road before they get them. They announced them a year ago, two years ago. Uh, so they're waiting for their ships to be built because that's how backed up these cruise ships, uh, these cruise, uh, uh, sorry, these shipyards are uh, around the world. Chevy first, hi, y'all. Uh, saying 84 days to go until I'm on the old conquest. Fantastic. 184 days, she's saying. Cam Wilson, laugh out loud, Bruce. Aren't you going to let that guy live that down? Are you? Are you? <laughs> are you going to let that guy live it down? I, I figured, well, the first twenty-four hours, I can rant. I mean, I just got the message. 
Uh, Tina saying, love can a cardinal going on my 10th on the Pride in September uh, with four more booked. Fantastic. Uh, if you got a good thing going, keep it going. These new ships are fantastic. Uh, it's just awesome stuff. They've got to figure it out. Uh, you know, you look at that, how that car carnival started with, uh, you know, a guy, a marketing guy selling the uh, packages, but he didn't have a ship to put people on. Well, that's pretty good. I mean, it, can you sell a cruise to somebody without owning a ship? That's pretty slick. Uh, and then he's chartering ships, getting people on these chartered ships, but he's not running them. So he doesn't know how they're being treated. He's got their money up front, though. So, <laughs> but eventually... Carnival started building its own to its tastes and its wants, the way they want their ships built. Amazing. <laughs> Tammy Ray saying, uh, booked on the Carnival Horizon next year. Fantastic. So, yeah, that is going to be, uh, that's also going to be a great cruise. Yeah, these cruise lines, uh, how they're evolved, how they've come to be, you know, where, where they are now. Unbelievable. It's, it's taken incredibly good management, phenomenal logistics, uh, a little bit of luck, a lot of hard work. Uh, and a loyal group of passengers, obviously happy passengers who've been satisfied with the service, uh, more happy than not, than not. And here we are today at 27, 28 million passengers this year. Next year, I think it'll break 30 million. That's two and a half million passengers a month getting on and getting off cruise ships. That is 5 million people turning over every 30 days on cruise ships. That is a phenomenal number uh, worldwide, of course. Uh, that will really be really be something. The only market that might go into decline might be China. Of all the markets that might not match uh, numbers, might be China because they're having issues with um, Japan and South Korea, uh, territorial issues and uh, uh, you know spats, and so there's issues there. But. Uh, Sooner or later, they'll get a res something will be resolved, and then uh, cruising will take off again in China, and it'll grow. It'll grow larger. China will become a major market for cruise for cruise companies eventually. Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if uh, uh, a couple of Chinese billionaires get together and create their own line. Uh, they'll and they'll be given uh, national preference by the government of China uh, because you know they're Chinese owned and operated. But we'll have to see how that goes. That might be five or ten years down the road. Does it matter to the folks in Miami? Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. Uh, but we'll we'll see what happens there. Um, Bob O saying on the Carnival Freedom in October for the Panama cruise. That should be nice. And K Sib, uh, get on uh, YouTube. All other videos I looked at today had ads popping up on them. Get on YouTube. All other videos I looked at today. Uh, well, not mine. <laughs> I don't think you're talking about me. I wish you were talking about me and my videos. Uh, boy, would I love it if I were uh, monetized. But unfortunately, I am not uh, not on the uh, program right now, uh, waiting for uh, waiting for YouTube to give me the green light. Uh, it could come by a, by an email, or it could come where someone says to me, "Hey, Bruce, I was just watching your channel, and uh, I think you're monetized because I had to watch a commercial before I got to see your your video." Well, that would make me happy. Let me tell you that. If that happened, I'll say I'll say that for sure. But uh, as far as I know, I am not. Uh, I'm not monetized. I'm checking right now, and it says on my channel, uh, "No, you're not monetized, Bruce. You're still not monetized." So no, I'm. Uh, I'm still. I'm still looking for. Uh, I'm still looking for uh, the tip jar from super chats or or from uh, uh, gifts like these behind me. Uh, for uh, for medallions and or these necklaces. I didn't tell you about the necklaces. Uh, any of you are new. These are some of the necklaces I've kind of put together. I have probably 70 different teams, NHL, NFL, baseball. Uh, these are gold necklaces here. I've just got it kind of strung out over this board. And uh, I have the pendants. And um, uh, if there's a team you'd like to have for a necklace, let me know. Uh, a $10 contribution to my channel. It gets you a necklace. And uh, and uh, be more than happy to send you on uh, anywhere you live, but uh, we shall see about that. Um, I mean, KB saying, I uh, saying, I mean, contact them. You should call them because there's channels. Everyone else with ads on them. Uh, I actually, I have written to them, uh, but um, you generally don't hear back. <laughs> you, you just have to wait it out. It's just the way it is. I have not, I have not had any change in my status. I am an approved channel. I have, uh, I have a. Um, 
I have a green bar beside all the parameters of my channel, like I'm golden. Uh, and it just says that I'm in review, that my channel is being reviewed. Uh, and I should know within a week. And it's been saying that for four weeks. But I know of many others that are in the same boat that I am. So it's just the way the YouTube uh, system is right now. They're overloaded with uh, work. And they're probably being extra diligent these days with all the scandals right now happening to uh, uh, Facebook and other sites. So that's just the way it is. Uh, anyway, that's just that's the, that's what we got. Uh, so far, it looks like we got 25 thumbs ups tonight. Thank you, folks, for giving me thumbs ups. Uh, anyone else can spare me a thumbs up. That would be fantastic. Please uh, throw them on there. It helps with the uh, with the uh, the uh, analytics. Um, and uh, tomorrow is uh, Friday. I'll be doing my show at five o'clock tomorrow night, and then I've got my show on Saturday for two o'clock in the afternoon. So that's that's the immediate future of my affairs and my activities for the channel. Uh, I think I'm going to wrap this up tonight. I'm going to say thank you to everybody for coming out. I hope you, I hope you found it interesting the the timeline here with regard to these cruise lines, how everything has been evolving and coming along. Um, I find it fascinating, this stuff. It's just, just amazing to me how, how this is going. Um, I want to thank all of you for viewing my channel, for finding this channel, for subscribing. Any of those who want to subscribe, there's a button here. There's a button there. Just hit the subscribe button. It's free. We're up to 1,414 subscribers. I'm loving every minute of it. And we're heading for 1,500 now. We're going for 1,500 subscribers. And I think it's going to be sooner rather than later because it's building. And I'm so appreciative of all of you following me. Any of you who are sharing my videos out there, I appreciate that too. Uh, sharing me on Facebook, sharing me on uh, spreading my word, the, sp the word of my channel on Instagram or Twitter. Love it. I really love it. Um, <laughs> uh, Tammy Ray, I like your polite, patient attitude about YouTube. <laughs> Silo, cheers. Cam Wilson, I love this stuff. Pamela, Jordan, uh, good night all. See you all next time. Um, K Sip, thanks for coming out. Uh, Bobo, of course. Uh, Tim, uh, Tina. Uh, Chevy in first, thanks for coming. Randy, the steaming bean. Uh, loves to travel was here today. Sylvan, as always, Scott was here. And uh, Lady Luck was here today. Uh, fantastic. Norman was around. Thanks, Norman. Charlie Bomb. Peter Heckema, thank you, Peter. And uh, Randy Lucas, thank you again for the super chat today. Leslie Lovelies was here. Bob Hollis was here. So real, so new, so everything. <laughs> Appreciate that. All you guys, it was fantastic. Uh, appreciate all you coming by. Have a great evening, everybody. Everyone's giving thumbs ups. Uh, let's see how many we got now. How many we got now? We got uh, 29. Got four more. How about that? Thumbs ups are coming in. Thanks, you guys. Uh, have a good evening. I'll talk to you tomorrow. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thanks for joining me this evening for my 8 o'clock show here on Traveling with Bruce, the fastest growing YouTube uh, cruise ship uh, channel there is that I know of. Um, six, eight. Eight live streams a week. Who does that? Have a good evening, everybody. Catch you tomorrow at 5 o'clock Eastern time. We'll have some fun. And uh, we'll take it from there. Take care, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye now.